Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Though. It's the... <laughs> What is that calling? A fish. Fish? Yeah. No. Fish call. It's an Aquaman swimming yes. fish. Really? Well, that's I don't know. I don't my know. story. That's how Aquaman. That's, that's just, like, just no. It was like every Aquaman scenario you could come up with is the super friends, and we've got the guy who flies and has laser eyes. Mm-hmm. We've got the billionaire with an arsenal of weapons that he shouldn't legally own, and uh, an, an invulnerable goddess. And uh, the dude who calls fish. Yeah. Yeah. No. You talk to fish. Yeah. yeah. No, you, you got to... Everything is wrong about what you're saying. <laughs> the only way to do a fish call is from Sesame Street. Mm. Bert and Ernie. Mm-hmm. Back to your roots. Yeah. I'm so old. Is it here, here, fishy, fishy? Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. This is Him Yim Superfans. Hey there, Chris Venezia. Hello, James Hamilton. Hey there, Mother Fan Dan. What is up? Uh, this is the podcast about the CBS comedy, How I Met Your Mother. And as always, we will ruin the show for you. That's your spoiler alert. We're going to spoil plot points for the entire series. And if you're a real super fan, go ahead and check out season one. We've got it all up on the webpage and the Facebook and the YouTube. And the Libsyn. And the Libsyn. I think we should try extra hard to ruin the show for people in these last few episodes. Oh, uh, yeah, we're gonna tear the shit down. <laughs> Shut it down. Shut it all down. <laughs> this is episode 219, entitled Bachelor Party, a.k.a. The Bachelorette Party. It was directed by Pamela Fryman and written by Carter Bays and Craig Thomas. Yeah, that's not surprising that they wrote it. It's It's got that bit at the end that's kind of like story critical that that Barney went to San Francisco to get Lily a ticket so that she would come back. Right, yes, it it ties the the end of the season into the beginning of the season. Yes. And establishes a, you know, Barney is the jerk with a heart of gold. Yeah, exactly. Mother Fan Dan, thank you for joining us. Ah, I'm glad to be here. I don't think I've seen this one. It's the one with the Sex and the City references. Okay, that I'm a little closer now. Uh, Brad is naked in this episode. Mm-hmm. We get oh. uh, guest star Joe Manganello as Brad. Yeah. Like, turning from uh, the brunch arc. <laughs> yes, with the redonk eggs Benny. Mm-hmm. Also guest starring is Matt Boren as Stuart. You remember Stuart? He's back. Yeah, Stuart, yeah. Of How's Stuart it going, Stuart? <laughs> Things good at home? No. <laughs> no. Uh, great, uh, great line reading. I hope that's in this episode. <laughs> I believe it is. Uh, Aaron Cardillo. Aaron Cardillo. Who's that? Treasure. Oh, okay. Do Aaron, you, Aaron with an E. Do I, for some reason I was thinking like A.A. Ron. Yeah. <laughs> So do you have any more questions for Mother Fan Dan? Yeah, that's not really a trivia. No, no. I don't have any trivia questions. Oh, for you. well. Uh, we got a couple other guest stars here. We have Megan Fay as Janice Aldrin, Lily's estranged mother, not present at the birth of her grandchild. <laughs> right. Well, that yeah, that's only for friends. Mm-hmm. Ch- children births. Lily, Lily's mom, um, not a huge part of the story, I suppose. I mean, we, we just had an episode not that long ago, uh, was how Lily stole Christmas, where she references her mom and how her mom wouldn't get her an easy bake oven. Right, yeah, it was it was the C-word episode. It was. Uh, other Otherwise, her mom is not mentioned a whole lot. Her oh. dad, actually, who she's even more estranged with, comes up much more in the series. Yeah, it, I, I mean, guess, later. And I, and I called her estranged, and I guess that's because she appears so infrequently in the series. I mean, she was mentioned in How Lily Stole Christmas, and she appears in this episode, but she doesn't appear in the other episodes where you expect the mother yeah. to appear in. Yeah, that's true of all of their parents right. and, and and siblings. I mean, Lily's mom lives in New York. That's like an extra level of she should be there at more stuff, unless I guess Lily didn't invite her. 
of Ted's parents and and Heather actually Heather eventually moves to New York and then doesn't show up in any other episodes. But like Ted's parents aren't just going to like show up for everything. They live in Cleveland. Right. Ted lives in the moment. My fan theory: Janice Aldrin hates Ted. Oh. And avoids him as much as possible. Okay. Well, I hope that you can back that up. Well, that would be why she very rarely appears in the series. She doesn't share a scene with Ted Mosby in this episode. There's, but, a, there's a dildo in this episode, right? It, oh, no, a vibrator. It's incredibly lifelike fake penises. Right. Isn't there a nun in this episode? No. She is studying to become a nun. Oh, okay. Nun in training. Nun in training. Or a nit, as they say in the trade, in, in the Catholic game. Neither of you would. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I what? I'm willing to allow it. I, I... what's happening? <laughs> <clears throat> Mother fan Dan, you got any bachelor party stories? Actually, I'd, I'd prefer to go around the room and hear your ba- bachelor parties because I have not had a very exciting, interesting bachelor party story. Pretty tame. That's how I like it. I say that, but you know. Well, it's like TV. Eventually, a stripper's gotta show up, right? We're all very close friends, so we've all attended many of the same bachelor parties, and they've all been pretty tame. None of them have featured a giant naked Brad. Right. Very few of them involved gambling. None of them involved strippers. I can't help here. All I is the episode of Friends, where Joey's upset. The Chandler didn't get actual bachelor party. Monica's on board and sets something up. And it's just the two of them, and she accidentally hires a hooker. Okay. Wasn't there wasn't there a bachelor party on Friends where Joey has the ring and he thinks that the stripper stole it, but it was actually eaten by the duck? Yes. Okay. That also happens. That okay. was for Ross's. Okay. Yeah. Many one of his yeah. many I don't know who If he's not careful, he's not gonna get married at all this year. <laughs> <laughs> his bachelor party was an escape room and Yeah. Yeah. And 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 shooting guns. Right, yeah, shooting guns, no no strippers. But actually, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, firing some guns. That would be a bachelor party that Robin would like to attend. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we'd probably allow. Yeah. Col- or Colby is definitely invited to my bachelor party. Okay, just put that out there <laughs> right now. Or any other bachelor party that I attend. Mm-hmm. Or any other social event. <laughs> really, if you could just have her Seriously. be around. <laughs> Next Wednesday. And if, she, and if she could wear the Maria Hill costume, that would not upset me. <laughs> Let's instead, let's, uh, let's dig into this episode. As always, we're, uh, we're going to watch it while you talk about it. We're going to go watch and talk. Uh, you don't have to watch it with us. Watch and talk. I will not. But you, but you can. You don't have to. Last, uh, I mean, it was early summer, late spring, something like that. It would have been May. May is when Lily leaves for the summer to go to San Francisco. And the episode starts with Barney getting up from the table so that we can come back to this later and say that's when he got fed up with Marshall sulking around, being a sad sack, and flies to San Francisco. Right. Right. So it opens with this nice little sting that ties it into the over the overall story arc of the season that's kind of told again from Barney's perspective. We got, in a way, we got the Ted Lily story and how Lily stole Christmas. Yes. The C word episode. And we, this is, this is the long awaited Lily Barney story. Their relationship doesn't get played a lot. And it's actually being more familiar with the later seasons where they've already developed this like, mother-child relationship where he really respects her but kind of still gives her a lot of sass 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, and she does she does mother him a little bit, and he needs it. It is kind of an unusual dy- dynamic that they have, but it it works. But yes, we've gotten to see like we've gotten to see Marshall's reaction to Lily leaving and coming back. We got to see that in Swarley. That was that was good. We've gotten to see yeah Ted Ted's reaction to Lily leaving and coming back and how Lily stole Christmas. This one is about how uh, Barney and Lily have their Lily leaving and coming back story with with Barney. Robin doesn't get one. She's just happy to see Lily again. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. When she when she, when she comes she, back, she actually knew Lily the least and was probably the most supportive of her decision to run out on her husband, fiance. <laughs> run out on her fiance. Yeah, uh, and and as you've said before, you even theorized that it's possible that some things that Robin said that encouraged Lily to leave in the first place. Right. It, sort of. A, in in the first season, Robin was sort of having a crisis of uh, of ambition or or direction and she was wondering about what what is she going to do next what's in store and she might have put those seeds in in lily's mind and yeah, lily was asking a lot of questions about like you know, like well how do i be a grown up now what's it like to be a fiance like when do i stop getting into beer chugging contests and and Robin's like, well, whenever you want. I mean, whatever you want. There's no, there's no time frame. There's no, there's no direction that you have to go, kind of thing. Uh, and just Robin in general being more career focused and less relationship focused, I think did probably rub off on Lily a bit. We we have the guys going to Atlantic City, and uh, they're going over the Brooklyn Bridge. And I I want to point out that this uh, could actually be. Uh, a tale of two bridges. The tale, a tale of two bridges. <laughs> I get it. I like it. Yeah. That's no, because it's like they're actually you. Are... They they make a point to show it in in this where they're going to Atlantic City, and then also when Barney goes to San Francisco, which we'll get to. This this gets to showcase actually the side characters more than anything. I mean, you've got uh, Stu, whose marriage is in, I don't know, it's not its not enjoyable for him. Barney, who's trying to do everything in his power to do the opposite of what Marshall wants, which is only redeemed by the flashback of him, you know, going to San Francisco to make any of this happen. Yeah, it shows he spends Barney's the, two sides. He spends the entire, yes, because he spends the entire episode uh, ruining the bachelor party. Insisting, Everything that he does, yeah, insisting that he he get his way, that he sleezes it up with the stripper, and and it does almost like a I can turn this around kind of thing. Like no matter what bad stuff happens, it's like I can turn it around, and he can't. He can't turn any of it around. No one is having any fun except for maybe him, and I'm not even sure that he is. Uh, but Brad, Brad's funny in this because. Uh, because the last time we saw him, he wasn't actually on good terms with Marshall. Yeah, Brad last seen in the brunch arc early, set up early in <laughs> yes. the uh, in in the uh, in this season. Uh, they they parted on poor terms. They they went out on a couple of mandates. Right. And things got a little weird. Almost went to Vermont. Yep. But uh, I I I guess things he had to patch things up. Like Brad, like wanting to gamble as soon as he gets there, and then not appearing in the rest of the episode until he gets picked up, uh, completely butt naked, uh, like oh, yeah. on their way back to New York. I was like, I like that. Like that's just that's funny, and they didn't spend hardly any effort making that joke. Sir, not appearing in this episode. Yeah, I I, I loved it. I had to watch it twice to make sure that he does not appear in any scene except the car. Yes. Yeah. And and if you fast forward through the episode, you'll see them driving across the bridge and then through the woods and then uh, through another area. To grandmother's house? Yeah. Yeah, to to, to Atlantic City. Mm-hmm. And and it's just changes in lighting. They could have shot all that in one day and the and all Brad had to do was step out of the car, strip down, yep. step back into the car. <laughs> on, on the other side. Yeah. Yes, do do the uh the Fire drill, if that's not super offensive. <laughs> I don't know if it is or isn't. Robin gets a gift for Lily. She thinks it's like a bachelorette party, uh, which actually puts a little bit of a, a damper on the uh, AKA bachelorette party. Because it's, it's not. It's like a wedding shower with like moms and grandmothers and nuns and children. 
Yeah, it is an odd decision to call this a bachelorette party. And I like your description much better. <laughs> it, it, it's much more like a wedding shower. Robin goes in with a big old black dildo. Well, <laughs> actually, this this negligee is, like, that she's showing Barney. Like, actually, I think that would have been sufficient. There's nothing 1850s about it, like like Barney says. Yeah, I, I like it. You don't have to drink a sarsaparilla that would, while, while you're wearing that. If you think about this, this is kind of anti-bro code. He, he's doing Marshall no favors by suggesting that his wife have some sort of accessory. Yeah, the, the negligee she, would be, yeah, more... And, and that she not wear sexy lingerie. You know, what's funny is that actually comes back around at the end of the episode where Lily is like, you know who'd get a kick out of this vibrator? Marshall. So I'm going to keep it. You you can't have it back, Robin. This I, I don't accept that this is a gag gift. Marshall wants this. <laughs> Let go of the box. Let go of the box. So Robin shows up with a vibrator. Uh, it's got the same wrapping as another package and the same blue bow. Yeah. What are the odds? Ironically, the same place sells blenders. It was a sewing machine. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I, I want to point out that there are like a million outs here for Robin. When uh, I was watching this earlier, I was like, her boyfriend lives in this apartment she has free access to an entire room that no one's allowed to go into during this entire wedding shower. Like, take your package. When you realize that, the you know, this is all going south, beeline it for Ted's room and just throw it in there. Just right. throw it, throw it and, in there. And that could have been an excellent second episode plot where Ted finds it. <laughs> yes! Yes! The, the card gets discarded through the magic of storytelling somehow. And yeah. Ted finds it, and he's like, whoa, oh well, what does this mean? Right. I'm a little intimidated, but yet intrigued. Yeah. That would be the HBO version of the show. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd watch that episode. Yeah. It would be like the male version of Sex in the City. <laughs> the male version, which is, uh, what was that? Um, the, the one the one with the entourage. What is... What <laughs> is, is it entourage? Yes! 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 Ah. It's, it's male sex in the city. That's what entourage I've is? I've never seen entourage. Oh, no, okay. So, but you've seen all of sex in the city. I have seen all of sex in the city. That's and important. And one movie. And one movie. There are two movies. So, I want to mention here that Janice Aldrin, uh, one of the characters that we don't see a lot, yeah, my fan theory was that she hates Ted, and that's why she barely shows up. Ted does not share a scene with Lily's mom. Which one is she? She's, She's the blonder one. The blonder well, one. Well, that introduce the cousin? I'll, po- I'll point her out to you in the next scene that, that they're in. Okay. Uh, she she does come back. She's in multiple scenes, but yeah. she never talks to Ted. No, no. And James is saying it's because she hates Ted. I, I like the theory... Uh, I'm guessing that Ted, in this in this hypothetical, could have said something douchey to her. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. The things that seem to bother Lily's mom are like uh, patriarchal stuff, though, which is like Ted's not on really about that. Uh, like even at his douchiest in college, I mean, he was about spectacles and froze. <laughs> I like that Stu returns, and it seems like things aren't going well for him. No. No, I, I do like when we were talking about, like, our bachelor party stories. Like, that, like that's the role that you, you like to fill at the bachelor party is, like, a trope man. Like, yeah, I wanted like, to shout the catchphrases, but <laughs> on, on, upon watching it again, it, it seems a little cringy. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, things aren't good with him and Claudia, and they do ramp that up as the series goes on and like in season nine Stu is definitely in some sort of relationship with another woman whether claudia knows about it or not perhaps they've gotten to something open by that point because the monogamy is not working anymore or maybe she doesn't know and he's just cheating right we don't know but Stu is definitely with another woman by season nine so their their marriage not the one to as- aspire to <laughs> although the way it 
we will flash forward here and talk about Stuart in season nine for a bit because I think the way that he says that's not Claudia was a very confessional and unashamed as though Claudia and he have an agreement. Okay. It could be. And that's all in, from inflection and interpretation, but... Speaking of inflection and interpretation, you really liked uh, Josh Radner's uh, delivery here when he's talking about like what he's planned for the evening. Yeah, we, we talked about earlier episodes, Ted's self-esteem in this episode's really mm-hmm. high, and his, his satisfaction is very high because he's in this relationship with Robin that's clearly very significant to him, why we spend a whole season on it. It's a whole year of his life, one of the more dedicated relationships in his life. So it makes sense that ultimately that that's who he wants to date after his wife dies. There's your spoiler. Boom. (laughs) He is so confident in his delivery here that he's in control. He's literally, he's driving the car. He's got a great sense of self-satisfaction in this episode and, and it's all in the face. And this is definitely a episode of face and body language for the entire cast, but Ted especially. Two important things about them coming <laughs> up to the hotel room. One, Brad is already gone. He decided he was going to gamble instead of coming up to the room. Doesn't catch up with him again until he's lost all of his clothes, probably due to some sort of horrible gambling accident. Also, uh, the Fleur de Lis on Ted's shirt. Yeah, a piece of clothing that stands out to me for some reason, appears here very boldly in this episode. He does wear it from time to time. It's just interesting. I don't think it means anything like, well, to the show. It's not like, oh, when Ted wears that, you know, this kind of thing. It's not like when Red is on the screen during that movie where the kid sees dead people. Die Over. Hard. Yeah, Die Hard. I, I like how they separate the episode visually here with the wedding shower with all women on screen, a lot of people on screen, and a lot of pastels and bright colors versus the other part of the episode, they're either in this dark hotel room or in the car or in the uh, offensive emergency room lighting that's kind of like (laughs) super bright. bright, So another uh, nod to face acting, another classic telepathic conversation. Yeah, they, they they mess it up. Yeah. They don't have as much experience with that as any of the other characters. We saw this in uh, season one in Mary the Paralegal, where Ted and Marshall are having a telepathic conversation that's so loud that Lily <laughs> it wakes Lily up. And <laughs> she, she thinks that Mary is a prostitute. Mary's a prostitute? Mary's not a prostitute! Yes. Got Vampire Lou in it. Does anybody else think that the uh, nun to be is uh, pretty cute? She's smoking hot. Too. Okay, all right. So I wasn't the only one. Never been with a tall redhead. <laughs> Someday. So let's talk about hippity hops. Mother Fan Dan. Did friends do it? Yep. No, it's not a stripper based thing. It's a oh. it's a birthday gift. Is that it's for the child inside of you and also the woman. I don't know. That's not exactly right. It's for Phoebe. Phoebe. Right? Yeah. She always well, wanted a hippie no. hop, but she grew up on the streets, and right. so she didn't get a hippie hop. So, so somebody gets her one as an adult to make up for her terrible childhood. I don't do a good impression of Phoebe or Rachel. You probably you probably could do a decent Rachel if it was about about falling asleep or not. Or not falling asleep. Fell asleep? 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 <laughs> So anyway, I have a question here, guys. The, actually, the five of them are going to share a 102-ounce steak. A 102-ounce steak. That's about, I mean, you know, it's about 20 ounces per person. When I, when I was eating steaks, I was eating about six to eight ounces. So that's not about the amount. But my question is, sharing a steak, who in the world does that? I mean, why would you order a 102-ounce steak and then cut it into five pieces or do you like do you like feed each other? Do you like cut off like a piece of it? And be like, Here, bro, chew on chew on this beef. Well, Brad would probably hey, be Brad. down for that. <laughs> okay, so Here, Brad, Brad. Would, Brad would. But uh, I think if you order a hundred and two ounce cut of beef, it's multiple steaks. Oh, right. No, I assumed it was one. 
No, no, that would you'd have to have a cow the size of Jupiter, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, Jupiter's a big place. Okay. But, uh, I mean, okay, so yeah, it'd be like a yeah, like a really really big cow. I don't understand your problem here. Is that it's the sharing? Yeah. Why would you order one cut, one one hundred and two ounce cut of beef, and then like? Let's share this. But that's what Ted Joey wants to do. do. He yeah. would. He he's gonna get the biggest cow, a yeah. Jupiter sized. He picked cow. it out on the internet. And also, he said earlier that he likes uh, Ted's performance. Josh, Josh yeah, Rogers' the performance. Marshall's sitting there. He loves it. He, yeah. He loves the idea of what Ted has planned. Yeah. He's be, he's being a great best man. Like that is actually what he wants is to cut any kind of yeah one hundred like, two ounce cow piece of, into of meat. Yeah. whatever that would appeal to any Minnesotan. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, that, that would seem like something that yeah that would. I'm Minnesota surprised would that Marvin did not fly out for that. <laughs> oh yeah, well that's the other thing. Like the bachelor party and Marshall's dad isn't there and shenanigans. He, he, Marshall would like to have his dad there. I think. Yeah, yeah, because they're super close. Yeah. Just revealed in later episodes. Maybe maybe not the whole evening. So we have skipped much of the wedding shower, but I do love the what seems like 60 seconds of silence here. Well, Lily has the package opened, and she's looking at the package, and it's a great package. It's a big package. You have a huge great package, Grandma. And, like, Grandma's staring at her, and Lily's staring back, and looking down, and looking up, and, like, that's the longest silence I recall in this show ever. It, it was a great piece of timing. I also like this story, too, and we haven't talked enough about it, but it is wonderful building that tension and they have multiple scenes. They split yeah. it apart. But right. if you cut it together, you watch it together, it's just a brilliant piece of storytelling and suspense building that makes that long pause and the looks worth it. Well, right, because there's like the, you know, I, we used to do this as a family. Like, your dad would use it sometimes, you know, even though he wouldn't probably want it, you, know, you, to, you or anyone else to know that. Um, you know, we would have a contest to see who could finish the quickest. You know, all sorts of all sorts of jokes like that. They make this point that like every one of the women, when they find out that it's a vibrator, they say like, "No, no, I'm a Carrie. You're a Samantha." And I'm pretty sure that you're a Samantha, as far as like Samantha and Sex in the City is like like for better or worse is like the whorish character. And what I don't know, because I haven't watched too much of it, is that, like, Carrie, like, what would it mean to be a Carrie? You're you're just a regular person trying to make it in your life. Oh. That's what Carrie is. That's what it means. That's what she represents. So I'm a normal person, you're a whore, is that what they're saying? No, but I I will say that there's a fun moment when they do the uh, Sex and the City reference I love that show. I always watch it on TBS. Okay. So, wow. they're not watching the HBO oh, right. Showtime. Yes. I think it was HBO. Yeah, even the nun to be could probably watch the TBS version. It's a Got little racy. Scenes. Yeah, but, yeah, right. It's a little but racy. Yeah. Someone in that group says, "I watch that all the time." But yeah, they're not watching the original Sex and the City. Gotcha. And yeah, if you're going to be Carrie from the TBS version of, of the the, of, the eight PM version, then yeah, you, you're probably you're you're definitely not you're 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 uh, yeah the but everyone. Carrie is the Ted of mm. Sex and the City. He's trying. He's he's trying to date. He dates a lot. He mm-hmm. meets a lot of new women, and it's not quite right. And he's surrounded by his best friends. And they all have a different take on life. They do. And so that's what Sex in the City does. Barney yeah. would be... So Sex in the Barney City... Barney would be Samantha. Samantha. Yeah. That does... It would be Lily slash Marshall as Charlotte. The oh, prudish yeah. prudish character. Yeah, the prudish character. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, so that's, that's Robin actually... Robin Miranda then? Or does it not quite come full circle? All right, so we cut back to McLaren's. Everyone's wrapping up how they got kicked out of the hotel because of Barney's cigar. And 
Marshall is upset at Barney and says that, uh, and actually, he, he says some things here that make a lot of sense. Like, well, one, you're like, you're not the best man. Two, you ruined my bachelor party, which he did. And like, three, like, you don't believe in marriage and you don't think that we should get married. You don't think anyone should get married. Well, like, why don't you just not even come to the wedding? Pretty hurtful if you're saying that to somebody who has feelings, which seems like Barney doesn't most of the time. We know that he does deep right. down inside. But uh, then we get to see Lily talk about, uh, you know, like you said, the softer side. Right. Barney's, the, Barney's played very uh, very narcissistic in this episode. It's, he wants to do things his way. He gets the strippers. He insists on uh, the fog machine while she's on the hippity hop, which is a no-no. <laughs> and, and he insists that she continue after the exercise. And he insists on his cigar. And he's the only one really enjoying the show, if you remember that shot. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's really worked up to deserve that lashing. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what that's what I mean is that uh, like the whole episode he's being super selfish when it's supposed to be about Marshall. Uh, and so he deserves that. It turns out that he's the reason that Lily came back at all. Right. So when Barney sees Lily in San Francisco, she doesn't say anything. That's a little funny. What I thought was interesting was where he says that like Marshall's one of the best people I know, and eventually someone's going to realize it. If you wait another six months to come back to New York, he's probably already going to have a girlfriend because somebody's going to realize, you know, what kind of a cat she is. Like, that actually meant something to me instead of, like, you know, all the other stuff he said was just kind of like... Not not only do we learn that Barney is the reason, or at at least encourage Lily to come back, he also is actively taking girls away from her yes, r- yes away from him yes uh yes all uh scorpion and the toad he's like and i can't keep doing that forever or maybe he can yeah but uh you know well, apparently not he got pretty far with marina baccaron <laughs> the, oh crazy eyes they called her so at the end here uh lily and robin uh have i don't know a vibrator off where they they try to see who deserves the vibrator more. They continue this trend at the end of the episode. They have a little tag, a little teaser, a little extra part of the story. And it's uh, just an argument between the two women who, who gets to take the item in the box home. Yeah. And that's where, yeah, Lily says, like, Marshall would really like this. <laughs> you know, and, and she's lying. And if she's not, that's fine, too. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure she's lying to to keep it there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Also, remember, if we want to put the lens of, well, it's all future Ted saying, and it could just be his fantasy. You know? Oh, that's true, too. Yeah. He, he, he imagines that Robin's the kind of woman who would have fought over a big tildo. It's worth pointing out that Robin says that she wants to return it. I don't think that you can return any sort of vibrator or dildo or anything for obvious reasons i don't know i've never tried but if it's still in the original packaging i don't know if it's in like one of those it's like anything okay yeah like something like like, it's clearly not been opened okay maybe you have the receipt yeah and it has not been opened Mm. you just want to swap it out for a different color yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. something bigger something Something blue brighter something bluer So that was Bachelor Party, a.k.a. Wedding Shower. And uh, next week we're going to do Showdown, one Showdown. of our favorite episodes. And it's kind of a diversion because the next two after that are both wedding related. Right. Actually, the Showdown is sort of, um, it's, it's wedding adjacent in that Barney wins a bunch of things that he doesn't care about what he's won, so he gives all of his prizes to Marshall and Lily as wedding gifts. A proto-Barney's favorite things. Yes. Barney's favorite things! Uh, we point people to facebook.com slash group slash superfans. Yes, you can find out all of our stuff there. Uh, we're also Himium superfans if you want to see pictures of the cutest little boy in the world. And that's no tugboat. He's better than the tugboat. <laughs> the tugboat. Yeah, the, the Instagram is uh, mostly pictures of your dog? Almost entirely. Okay. 
Uh, YouTube, Hemium Superfan, Season 1, and some exclusive content. Some exclusive Flash Forward episodes. We do uh, all of the Robin Sparkles episodes. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, in, in, in a fight to the death. <laughs> I'm not sure who would win that. Who would win the black vibrator? Or blue? All right, thanks, everyone. Good night. How are things at home, Stuart? Not good.